Welcome to Reaching Out. We've got a real interesting program lined up for you today. We're going to talk about addictions, but it's particularly addiction to our cell phones, to Facebook, and to all of these things. You know, we've kind of ignored this in the world of addiction, but it's a major, major problem. Stay tuned. We're going to have a real good discussion. Wanda's got a couple announcements, and we'll get right into our, our discussion. Hallelujah. Well... Um, we have a busy week at Reaching Out, with uh, starting with Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9.30 and a worship service at 10.30, followed by a fellowship lunch for anyone who can stay. And uh, we encourage you to come out, visit us, uh, visit us and stay, uh, if that's your desire. Uh, right now, the... Um, the Bible study is meeting on Thursday morning at 6.30 at um, Danny's Cafe in Whitehall. We may change that. And you may change it. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but right now, today, otherwise it'll go... Call and make sure. Yep. Call and make sure. Um, so you can have breakfast and study the Word. And right now they're knee deep in Revelations which is very interesting. On Thursday, we have our food distribution. We rotate between uh, times, uh, first and third Thursday. We are there from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the second, fourth, and fifth Thursday, we're there from uh, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And so there are two different times that you can get food during the month. You can come every week if you want. Um, we ask for a $10 donation. You get quite a bit of food, and, uh, and we're happy to have you. So um, that, I think, is it, outside of the fact that we have a reachingoutministries.org website. It has... Pastor Allen's three books on it. It has testimony on it. It has a link to our um, our uh, Sunday morning messages uh, from um, a lot of them from Pastor Jeff Ryan. And uh, so we are we are set. That you can also get um, on YouTube and watch. Um, different uh, some of our programs here so yeah there's a lot of stuff out there yep so in a way that's that's what's going on we do a zoom call with the people in Africa if you're interested in in that particular type of ministry uh, give me a call I'll give you the code numbers and how to get hooked up on zoom it's quite interesting to talk to people that are dealing with some of the same problems we're all having in another country. The approach is different. Well, with that, we're going to get right into our subject. The subject, I'm going to, I'm going to <laughs> appoint it like this. Who thinks for you? Who is making the decisions in your life? Who is in charge of what you do? And I got some real interesting statistics. You know, we all criticize the alcoholic and the drugger because the drugs and the alcohol speak to them. But who is speaking to us 24-7, 365. Gabe, who is doing your most of your thinking? What? <laughs> who is doing most of your thinking? Oh, I didn't know you were going to ask me questions. I thought you just wanted me on the show this week. <laughs> um, Welcome back, grandson. That's a good question. <laughs> but see, you see, there's, there's a perfect example. He was on his cell phone. No, he, he, he was acting, I but went he did to, it well. I went to the... <laughs> I, no. I was in Florida. I was in Florida, and I walked the length of the plane, and two-thirds of the people were on their cell phone. Have we lost our ability to think? I think that we have handed that ability... Or the, to the cell phone? The, we've handed that the reins over to, I mean, lots of different groups out here. But one of the most recent developing groups has been big technology. 
and this innovation with the internet and with, with phones and with social media. Certain apps have become really like think tanks or groups in general. TikTok is an app that started oh not so gosh. long ago, TikTok. I guess now at this point. Wildly um, popular. Wildly popular app from China that is a very big addiction in terms of just you can watch so much content in the span of 30 seconds. You can get through five to six different videos that are short maybe, you know. Um, and that type of feedback loop, you know, we talk about instant gratification with this too. Instant gratification yes. is a phenomenon that's happened as things have gotten easier or quicker or more accessible. Um, yes. And so when you get yourself saturated in that feedback loop. Do you think loop, it's a trend or the future? I, do we do, are we becoming zombies? Do trends come and go, or should we use a different word? Well, I this don't is know. Like, are we zombies? Yeah, drones to a degree. So when the when the big or oh, the big screen, this is the big screen. When the big screen comes up, what does it do? It turns around and dictates everything that we do. No. Yeah. I, well, in a, some, in a, in yeah, a sense, but yeah. go ahead. Well, right, but it also, it, it does something to your brain going on um, the social media, particularly. It, it creates the feel-good dopamine. Chemically. Yes, it, like, like taking a drug or um, getting out in the sunshine and just really enjoying the day and taking a I walk can do that, watching too. Watching a cute video of a cat. My, yeah, my whole brain's yeah. lit up with, right. you know, with electrodes and, so and everything. And it's all this stuff straight. is going on in your brain. And that is part of what you get addicted to. Is that why you get up in the middle of the night and say, oh my God, where's my cell phone? <laughs> no, I, did. no, I, I don't do that, Alan. I just need the flashlight on it. I just need the flashlight. <laughs> 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 but then they do all that and they add so many tools to it. It's a thousand dollar camera on some of these phones. Mm -hmm. You got a flashlight in there, you got a calculator, you got GPS, you've got quite basically everything, right? Yeah. But you get saturated in this, I need this, or, you know, it takes up the role of other things like an atlas. Yeah. How many people know how to read an atlas out here? Yeah. I do. That's right. I know, I know you do. I used well, to know how to read Well, we do. I do. But the younger generations, not so much. Well, it's not. It's because they you don't, don't carry need, any with them. But you don't need to buy it. Why would you need one if you already have your phone, right? That's right. And so if you get a phone at the age of like 12 or 13 or 15, okay. Who, Somebody's phone just went off. Who did that? It's not Right, funny. I got a notification. But. That's another thing. You can your turn your notifications off. Notification. It's really immature. <laughs> but. I don't know how to make it mute. And that's the other thing about phones. <laughs> See, like, anybody got a hammer? Older people we'll don't it. know how to make the stupid cell phone work properly. I don't even know all the features like I used to. When I was like in my teens and stuff and I got my first phone ever, you know, it was like I was I was fascinated with it and I wanted to know every single like detailed tweak that you could do. And as I get older and stuff, you know, it's not really at the forefront anymore. And it's like, that's another thing kind of, you know, if we don't know what's going on with it or we aren't aware of the behaviors that it's, are occurring, you know, we can never get a step ahead of our phone then or we can never find a better use for our time sometimes, right? Like we don't need to be on TikTok, we don't need to be on Facebook all the time, or you know, and- Right. But this, so part of the solution to all this that we're gonna like talk about as we go here kind of, is like we have to be aware of what's happening. Let me read you know? a few- Yeah, just I, I don't think people are aware they're even addicted. Well, let me read a few statistics and we can challenge these statistics, but the, source of them was uh, people that were doing surveys and I don't know how legitimate the, uh, it is. Uh, I don't know how legitimate the whole thing is, but here's a few statistics. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you really ready? One in three would sooner give up their, give up having sex for their phone. That's 30% of the people would sooner have yeah. a talk on their phone and have sex. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking oh, of sex, 20% of the 18 to 34 year old phone users use sex during use or use their, their phone during sex. <laughs> Come on. I would love to see the questionnaires that were sent out when they get these questions. 33% <laughs> 
of adult users use their phone while on a date. And 35% of users have used their phones while in the movie theater, right? Yeah. And then, okay, this is, the, this is a good one here, though, too. 12% of users feel like their phones get in the way of their romantic relationships. I wonder why. That's a brutal one. Well, yes. Well, oh, here. To be chosen over, to be, to be chosen, not to be chosen, I mean, you know what I mean? You know yeah. what your Phone grandma tells me? You're on your cell phone! Yes. That's how she the says romance it. is left, <laughs> it's gone. You think we're getting addicted? <laughs> well, I think that when, if you, if you look at it back in like the scope of technology in general, technology has always been deemed beneficial or useful yes and this is still if we had to look at the timeline for like how long it's been with the internet or with some of these things it's it's relatively short yes in terms of a lot of things we've had cars for longer we've had toilets for longer we've had different things for a longer period of time and so we mm -hmm. are in like the middle stage of trying to redefine what this should be used for or you know yeah, exa well, exactly just what it should be used for and how it should be used. You know, it's kind of like... Who's going to determine that? The... Uh, the individual has to be responsible? FCC. I'm not trying, I'm trying to think of what... what oh, the, what the governing federal body communications would try. people? Well, you, you know, you'd probably see statistics from... Well, we, we have this information. I'm Whether the or not cell we, phone cop. I got <laughs> noticed that your phone is on. Wouldn't that help a lot of people, though? I don't know. Well, if we look at numbers and we look at statistics, sometimes it, it, it kind of almost appears like it would help a lot of people. Well, we all made this one. 31% of the people never unlocked their phones. And we've all got ours wide open. Well, I mean... You put yours <laughs> in your pocket. You're just trying to cover it up. Kind of. I like to leave it on the charger at work and not let it, like, dictate everything. Because, well, here's one piece, too, for you guys. If you have Netflix, look up The Social Dilemma. It is a Netflix documentary about the algorithm behind some of these large apps and how they watch your eyes and they watch for time and they watch exactly how long you're looking at things. And so they tweak the algorithm so that they can, it's like catching a fish, you know, you pull back out, you put something juicy around the hook, you throw it back in and they know how to do that with this technology now. Well, I can... Oh, I my can, gosh. I can be on... It's a good documentary. Grandma's cell phone and or on her computer, go back to mine, and what I looked at on her computer, they've got ads popping up on mine. Sure. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, and so it's like we, we joke about the cop thing, but... So like, who's in charge? We've literally got a robotic assistant watching us yes. and giving us things, yeah. and we almost need a physical in person to tell you no... Do not have your phone before bed. You do not need blue light in your eyes 10 to 20 minutes before you try to actually roll over and close them. Or you, you know, because so, we can no longer figure that out for ourselves. So that's, well, are we? No. Statistics are telling us no. You know, I would say this for everybody that's listening to this, this conversation. What, who dictates what's happening in your pocket, in your phone, in your car? We're going to look at the car statistics in a little while. We complain about the drugger. We complain about the alcoholic. Being an alcoholic or a drugger is not socially acceptable. But cell phones are being uh, running out your cell phone and letting the cell phone dictate your life instead of alcohol is absolutely acceptable. What are we well, thinking except here? Except for who the, sets your life? Except for the twelve percent where it's wrecking their romantic, <laughs> romantic relationships. relationships. Oh. <laughs> Right. Now we have the romance police. <laughs> Who is going to take charge of your life is the question well, at hand. Right. Well, are you... Have you ever left your phone home? Okay, have so you we... ever left your phone home and gone off someplace? Oh, yeah, everybody gets withdrawals. So we, well, yeah, I, you yeah. panic. Yep. Well, we just talked about a story from a, a colleague here about how their mother left their cell phone behind. And to me, that sounded like a nightmare because... It felt like I would be kind of disoriented if I didn't have it for GPS, especially if I was going somewhere new like Florida or California or going anywhere in the States, honestly, that I haven't been before. Um, and so, like, yeah, it feels kind of like it's we need it almost sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard to be aware of it because it's yeah. just become very ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives because 
technology was seemingly good. Seemingly yeah. good. Okay, let's look at the at the effects of the cell phone cell phone situation, and there's other reaches of this. But let's just talk about the cell phones for a second. I had a conversation with some truckers, and they quit using the Google directions. They use them in the city, but they quit using them out. The reason being, and they went back to the atlases, because when you look at an atlas, you see the whole state. You get a concept of the whole thing. When they use just their cell phone, all they see is that green strip and that road and turn here, turn there, turn here, turn there. Mm -hmm. And they have completely destroyed their ability to think about what they were looking at. Yeah, that has been my sure. problem with that that app is that I want to see I'm I'm used to looking at the whole area of the state or the whole state and I want to see where I'm going I don't want to just go down the road until you reach your destination I want to see it I, I agree totally with those truckers I, I don't like that they lose the concept here's yeah. an example we're in Wisconsin so we can use this Let's say you were going to go to Blue River, which is down uh, by uh, southern Wisconsin, and you were going to take Highway, I think, what is Highway 14 goes that direction? So it goes down to Kickapoo Valley. So you put it on your cell phone, and you put in the address in Blue River, and it, you follow that green line all the way down there. Mm -hmm. And you have completely missed the Kickapoo Valley. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's 100 towns in the in that area of Wisconsin. That's western Wisconsin. It's Highway 35. I mean, like, having to read the atlas, having to do your due diligence before you take a trip, having to do some of these things allowed you to be more in the trip, right? Allows you to be more invested in it. That's what the trucker is saying. It. He's and in the state. He's in the area. And it's also just, val I mean, it's valid to read maps. It's, good. it's a good skill to have. Wow, you got a notification too. Uh-oh. We got an alert. Should we look and see okay. what that alert is? All right. So <laughs> can we live without knowing it? So what do the truckers Probably. do then? Do they have their cell phone set with the little highway and the little car going on it? They have that on the And dash. then have the Atlas, Atlas. also. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. You're, see. You're, let's use the trucker's example. He's going to uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And... Of course, Cheyenne, Wyoming has got sunshine. Everything is good to go. However, there's a storm coming in from Kalispell, Montana, or Calgary, uh, Montana, or Can Ca Calgary, Canada. He doesn't show that. And he, well, where's Kalispell? Where's Calgary? Where are these towns? What oh, am I looking I at? Oh, I see, yeah. If he's getting alerts, then it should be close, but he doesn't know exactly where it's he at. He doesn't have a clue. That's why when I went to Florida, we were there. I went there not too long ago. I drove between the storms. I went on the computer. I went to the U.S. map, and I saw the two storms. So when the storms separated, that's the day we drove to Florida. So we drove between them. The first one had gone through. There was uprooted trees laying along the interstate. That all happened while you were sleeping in Tennessee. Yes. You see, so there's, are we causing an evolution of lifestyle well, because of the cell phone? Life has changed. Technology has caused this evolution. But we're talking lifestyle. about addiction. The, the cell phone, the, the uses that you can use the cell phone for are good. But we're talking about being so addicted that we never can be away from our cell phone. It's Isn't like that a, right? It's like That's a what we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, well, I should check my I should check my notifications. Well, right. If, if you were addicted, you would stop talking on the program, yeah, and we you would stop have it. to I check. Gotta, I better check. This. <laughs> well, you wouldn't even announce it. You just get on your phone and uh, you just ignore us all for like right. ten seconds here. And we'd have to. Gabe and I would have to carry on while you check your notifications. That would be addiction, don't you, right? Uh, don't you wonder what that what that notification is about? No. <laughs> no, I I no. turn I turn my It'll notifications wait. off to be honest with you. Yeah. That's what part of that that documentary, the social dilemma. I mean, 
it was saying to turn your notifications off and try it. And right. it honestly, it was a little bit less stressful than normal and it was just <laughs> refreshing to not have your phone vibrate. Well, I mean, you weren't checking it all the time, you know? Okay. Right, and if you don't hear it, you don't know they're coming in either. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So then you can check them like on a lunch break or something. Okay. As I'm long as you're alone and not with your romantic relationship. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, you're hooked on that. Don't ruin it. <laughs> There's 1.6 million accidents caused by someone using a cell phone while driving. 1.6. More than drunk driving? No, distracted drivers cause more traffic accidents than people who are speeding or driving under the influence of alcohol. The common causes of distraction are mobile phone, eating, drinking coffee. Yeah, yeah. Where do we draw the line? Uh, I, well, I think one of the solutions to all this, or one idea about it, is that we have to change our perspective on what social media is. You know, like, they're, they're trying to do legalized substances with, like, therapy out in Oregon. And with purpose and intention, it, turn, it changes the whole idea of what they're doing versus someone just using a substance. So, like, you know, are we being used by the phone? Or, yes. or are we using the phone? Do we view it? We're being it, used by the phone. So we don't view it as a tool, though. So we, we don't view it as a tool. We view it, it as entertainment. It controls us. Yeah, it's entertainment. It's a companion we enjoy having around all the time. Yeah. We'd rather be with our phone than alone, or we'd rather be alone with our phone, I mean. Because it makes us feel good. Because What's, it makes what us feel good. What do you do? Good. What do you pick up when you come in a house? Your phone. Maybe. I pick up the phone when I come in the house. Usually you're talking on it when you come in the house. Well, I probably started talking on it when I was outside Out the in the house. car? Yeah. And yeah. what did you do when the phone rang in the car? Well, I looked to see who was calling and then I answered it. Then Grandpa comes in and realizes he forgot his phone in his truck. Yeah. He has to go back out and get it. Yeah. You see how, uh, how yeah. we are controlled you know, the Word of God says we're supposed to give our control to Jesus Christ, not to a cell phone. Being controlled by your cell phone is sin. Boy, now I've got everybody upset. No, you preach it. I got a couple of scriptures about that. <laughs> because, because that's the solution, I think. It's no different than um, any addiction. It. It's no different than any addiction. Absolutely. Look. He just said you have to have your cell phone with you all the time. If you're addicted to food, if you have a food addiction, you're the same thing. The you're eating all the time. You're looking for food. You're thinking about your next meal. You're thinking about it in the middle of the night. Some people have their cell phones with them in the middle of the night. And they have to check their phones in oh, the yeah. middle of the I night. I got a statistic mm -hmm. on that. I think that's there. crazy. But... Um, Okay, anyway, James, you know, James is so good explaining some of the stuff that we go through, like temptations. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. And don't we all want that? Which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. And one in three people check their phone before midnight. The last thing they do before they go to bed is to check their phone. Yeah. Do you think we're enticed? The desire is strong. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a... It's, it's well, yeah, I guess I might even do that. I checked this. I woke up at 5.40 this morning by accident. Checked my phone, put it down, rolled back over, went to bed. Well, I've been so practicing leaving mine lay. Do you think you're addicted? Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to cell phone. I'm addicted to my computer. Stimulus. So who's thinking for you, board. Pastor? The cell phone is thinking. Yeah, that's scary. Well, it's, it's real, though. 
According to a study in 2017, there were 210 million people addicted to the internet and social media. Young single women are the most addicted to social media among all market segments. Facebook accounts for 22% of internet time by the average American internet user. God, where, I don't know. Okay, okay. And so, like, on top of that, when you get on these apps now on Facebook and on Instagram and just in general, now you've got what we could call false idols mm -hmm. everywhere. You have people That's who right. have, see everybody as a cash crop and they want to make content and they want you to watch it. Um, and whether that content, and they put an ad on there they, for you. They put an ad on there, or they have some sort of yeah, they have some sort of product they're trying to sell on top of that too. Yes, to draw you in. And so you have addictive personality of your own to compete with, because now you you want to be on it too in general. And now you've got to watch these other people out here really push the gas, really pump the gas. Yep. I mean, the and, average and teenager spends that's hard to fight nine hours a day, and teenagers and people younger than that are easily influenced yeah and you wonder right? wh wonder why our kids are not topping the education nine hours on the cell phone oh yeah they do do some study i'm sure but look at look at the distraction that that has given them this is a real real addiction and it's all socially acceptable well yeah which you makes know it and there's various degrees i don't think you guys are I'm not addicted on a addicted. terrible level. I, on a minor level, I would say. You're you know? attached to your cell phone, yeah. but you're not addicted. Addict, here's, you want to hear a definition for addiction that I like? Go ahead. Addiction is the narrowing of things you enjoy in your life. Mm. Whereas the opposite of that would be to have a broad, expansive life where the things you enjoy and the things you like and care about keep growing. Well, if you guys... That's are, very, very good. I enjoy that one quite a bit. Hold that thought, and I'm going to bounce you with this. Okay. If, you're, if you have to use your cell phone when you're having sex, when you're on the toilet, when you're having <laughs> romance, you have a problem. I would say so. Can you document in your mind how many times you stay alone with your thoughts or just in a quiet room, just not even thinking even maybe? You don't have to, but if you are being thought for in terms of your phone keeps buzzing, this app is telling you to check it, this other app is telling you to check it, they start doing that notifications like that. And that's why in general, another solution to all this is to try and keep it out of your mind so it doesn't pester you. How can you keep it out of your mind? Turn your notifications off. Yeah. Put your bed on your charger and plug that's, it in across the room yep. when you're going to bed at night. Yep, that's it. Uh, put it you know, in another room. We don't yep. need a cop to come and enforce all of this, but no. it feels really bad that these are the solutions that we have to talk about when a lot of us will not do the base solution sometimes. Right. Well, the, the, you know, I have families. I, I've heard of families who, when they get together for dinner, put it all in a basket. They put it all in a basket and leave it by the door and I you pick up your cell, cell phone, phone when you leave. Cheers. That's what should happen with our family too because there are times when we're just fine and we're not on our cell phones and then after dinner and everybody settles down and relaxes like they do at home and they open up their cell phones. So I think that we have a new policy developing here that we leave our cell phones at the door. Dang it. Do you think anybody come for dinner? Pastor and I included. Well, they, they're they not going to know this until for, they I'll come. I'll come for dinner, but I have to leave early. I just realized I have, you a thing. Have to leave early. I have a thing to go do. And then I'll come back, though, after I go sit on my phone for 20 minutes in my car. Oh, my gosh. You know, here, I'm going to give you another statistic. Internet users spend the most time on Facebook, 58 minutes. Instagram, 53 minutes. Snapchat, 49 minutes. YouTube, 40 minutes. And what's up, 28 minutes. I used to be upset mm -hmm. about that statistic uh, about um, how you sleep most of your life away. You know, you sleep like half your life away and stuff in general because you're just, you're always sleeping, right? Well, cell phone but, got but, you. But this <laughs> one is starting <laughs> to build up too. This is worse. Too. And it's like, if you, Much worse. if you have issues or you have, you know, questions wondering, you know, why don't I have enough time to do certain things or, you know, I'm getting, priorities are getting away from me and yep. I, I can't get, seem to get them done. You, yep. It, it's time to reevaluate or, or evaluate the actions you are actually taking and what you're doing. Um, and that's something I'm in the process of doing right now, actually, because 
we need to figure out what matters and what we, what right. we really need to be happy because yeah. if you always take your happiness from something external, which is like our cell phones and things that, all these people and apps and things like that, things that can be taken away from you, you know, because you're not happy when your phone goes missing then, right? So, mm -hmm. but if you're, if you're letting these things dictate your happiness then when they get taken away from you or the god forbid the grid ever goes down or something crazy happens right oh we're man if the grid goes down a lot of people are going to be angry and, and upset or a lot of people are going to have some weird control over their emotions because let's they're talk not, about that for a second comfortable what, what happens if the, if the grid, grid goes, goes down? down how are you going to order groceries <laughs> how are you going to check the news how are you going to how, how are you going to text somebody? One in five Americans would rather get their news on social media than in the newspapers. And I think that statistic is wrong. I bet it's like three out of five. Yeah. And these yeah, are I think 19 it's... statistics. And 52% of U.S. adults get their news on social media. So yeah. you get your news on social media. You get your survival techniques on social media through a guy you follow on YouTube. Um, you get, yeah, all these different techniques. I mean. I th spend more time on YouTube than I do on social media. I mean, we could segue into something about how there are certain positives to this, but the problem uh, keeps coming back to is like, can we live our life in moderation? Yeah. Now we're back you to know, the, the Bible has Drink responsibly. The Bible has Use a lot to say about that. Addiction is addiction, whether it's to substances or cell phones or food or work or shopping or gambling, it's all addiction. And there's only one fix for it, self-control. We have to change our mindset, like you said, Gabe. We have to change our mindset. And the Bible has a lot to say about that because God knows all about addictions and he knows all about idols. He knows how people are constantly pulled away from him to things. And... Um, that's all idol worship. So I have another scripture. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, Proverbs has a lot to say about... Cell phones? About a addiction. lot of things, including addictions. But in Proverbs 25, 28, it says, A man without self-control or a woman... That's, a man or a woman without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. A whole city... They used to put walls around their city for protection against the enemies. And hold that thought for just a second and you come back to it. I wanna I wanna say something and okay. I want you to comment on it. All right. You know, in the old days, if you look at the old days they had stone wheels. And some of those wheels were just about square. So they came and developed the round wheel and it rolled really good. And then everybody got concerned that we were going to go too fast. Is the cell phone a round wheel? Oh, man. What do you think, Gabe? Well, so Grandma's example is about how if we have no walls up, we have no reservations about things. Right. We can't, we can't. Is it a round wheel? Well, and are that, we getting so, but the wheel is a tool now. Yeah, are we getting Grandma's concerned? talking about the structure of us as a person. Yeah. The structure of us with no walls will lead to addiction on any side. And what you're talking about is a wheel made out of the Stone. highest cocaine. Yeah. It's made out of the high, it's made out of one of the most addictive things in the world right now because progress would be addictive in terms of tools and technology. Mm -hmm. But in terms of us, you know, we, this type of dopamine release all the time or, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, the state of the world looks wild when you look out there, right? You Should know, we be a concerned? lot of us on a subconscious level might lean into some tools like this because we're uncertain about the future. We're uncertain about the world. We're uncertain about a lot of things. We had a pandemic that locked everybody inside for two, three years here. And, you know, we also might have gained some learned behaviors from that, actually. And so we, we have to have the willpower and the discipline to, to create a structure for ourselves. That's just a general thing. Our lives need to have structure. We need to have routine. Um, and then we have to be wary of things that act as a wheel, of, of things that will offset the balance. But we read have to read figure it out. the scripture again. Okay, Proverbs 25, 28. 
A man or woman without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. So are we, are we, uh, are we broken into? Have we mm -hmm. deserted our own choices? Well, things got so fast moving and so crazy that it's like, yeah. you know, if you did, if you had structure in place, great. And if you didn't, life is a highway, baby. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I want you yeah. to hold that thought. And I'm going to, I want to share another thing because <clears throat> I can see this going out of time. But I bought a new computer, new cell phone. I had to change the whole thing. He's addicted. So now I go ahead and I wanted to print up, I wanted to print up these notes. And you know what happened? Microsoft says I have to order their Microsoft Office. I don't want Microsoft Office. So what they do? They shut my computer down. I can't upload anything. Do, is that what we need? Do we need... I use Microsoft, but do we need internet police to keep our walls up? I mean, how do you, how do you build the strength to raise your, your own walls now in this day and age? We look at generations of people with more willpower and more, more of other things too, and we still see people that love social media. You're, you. But like, how, so how do, in a day and age where you know, we're trying to live for comfort or we're trying to live in the best way possible, how do we incorporate work into that and, and generating willpower and, and, and having standards? How do we have the best life that way too? Because the best life isn't necessarily just the happiest life or the life that's the most saturated in dopamine. We all know that. So does the wheel run too fast? Yeah. A lot of people are out here thinking to themselves, why am I not super happy? What is this? Are we are we plateauing? Why can't we keep up with it? No, we can't. Well, no, you can't let that's someone else... for sure. We can't. Well, you can't let all these guys out mm -hmm. here talking about what your self image should be or what your what happiness should be defined by. It's like and subscribe if you like this content right now, please. Um, but you can't you can't let these people define it because at the end of the day, a lot of it is we're in it for the money or a lot of people you know, want their careers to keep going. They want to keep making content for people to watch because it's fun for them to make. But not necessarily, you don't have to consume it all. So we have to figure out how to set boundaries or like, how do we have a lot more willpower in a, in a day and age where we're trying to be comfortable? You know, when we're trying to seek, com not complacency, we're not seeking. I don't know, I think of that it. scripture. That you know, <clears throat> I think that it comes back down to the simple truth that the Bible should be our foundation for life and everything around us is changing like Gabe said it's overwhelming I agree it's overwhelming I want to read you ought to be my age and try to keep up with some of this stuff and pastor's well, age and I want to read keep another, up with some of his stuff another statement it's it's goes back to the word of God you know cars are the <laughs> safest thing in the world we have done everything from seat belts to roll cages to you name it. So we've made cars extremely safe. Why? So we don't kill ourselves with the distractions. Mm. We couldn't manage the cars, so we had to put millions and millions of dollars into safety. safety. That's pro probably why they have driverless cars, because then you can just Driverless cars are safer than you want regular be. cars. Get back to wasting time. Yeah. Instead of actually just driving your car for some yeah. reason. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that It's pretty pitiful, really. You know. The wheel is going too fast. The wheel is going too fast. And so to I go. see what you mean. I mean, going back to old structure is not terrible at all. Going back to, we, we need to find structure and we need to find ideals in some of this. And it's funny that cars got safer, whereas social media got just smarter. Social media just got more ads. Social yeah. media just, you know, wants to keep you online longer in general. And it's not like it was about safety. Even when in the past, like, 10 years, you know, we've had statistics about how social media makes kids depressed, how it makes women depressed, men depressed, and, and, and how it targets our insecurities. And it just eats our free time up. It doesn't actually give us anything back. You know, you can have positive social interactions and you can network with people across the world. And it's great. But... It's not actually giving you 
something that's tangible or something that you can work with and this necessarily it's not it's just right I, wanna, not. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I want to share something with you guys and I really want your opinion on this I do a number of zoom calls with people around the world and you know after you get done it was just a movie if you go down to the restaurant and sit down at the table with someone and look them in the eye have coffee with them and share information with them. It has a whole different impact on you versus that Zoom call. Oh, you feel people's energy in real life. You know, you feel people's right. attitudes. You feel, you just get to feel more in the experience of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, great tool to have to talk to somebody in Africa or somebody in the Philippines or in general in India sure. maybe too, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, one of the biggest things that was happening with the pandemic was people how sad people were feeling because they weren't having interaction real interactions you right. know with with each other and you know it, that was a good social experiment to the prove that cell we can't, phone didn't do it we can't be hermits you know we we no. can't um we can't do that necessarily no, it's, people it's, fell it's, apart is the cell phone making us a hermit and uh, by default well it's like well it's like my example i talked about before we started we live in like a country where even in poverty, you can still seemingly afford some of the creature comforts and things that'll keep oh. you satisfied. But however, it won't get you ahead necessarily. It don't give you nothing. And you know, you were talking thing. about, oh. there's people, there's, I'm looking for the percentages, but there are some people that would give up their toilet versus having a cell phone. They'd have a cell phone before they'd have a toilet. I didn't read Use that a five-gallon bucket, carry it out. The people that use the most cell well, phones in the world in Brazil. It people would give up everything for their cell phone. Yeah, Some it's an them. addiction. Right, and that what is does the what the alcoholic? What does the drugger do? Absolutely. It's He'll no give different. up anything for a drink. It's the narrowing of everything you enjoy. So you give up everything until you get to what you have or what you want then. And in a nutshell, yeah. That's kind of what it is. So, what? Can I read something? Go ahead. This comes from Peter, the disciple. First Peter 5, verse 6, and on. Uh, let's see. Verse 7, actually. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him, meaning the Lord, and leave them here, there. For he always tenderly cares for you. Be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. And then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace who has called you to share in, to, in his eternal glory in Christ will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. You see, I guess what Wanda is saying is we have to get connected. We've got to get connected to the right source. To the right source and then use the cell phone. Then the cell phone or the wheel won't run too fast. If this truly is an idol that we're worshiping because we're constantly paying attention to it, constantly needing it, constantly uh, absorbed in it, then we need to change who we worship and turn back to God, turn back to the Bible, read all the stuff that the Bible says about serving the Lord Jesus. That's the bottom line to me. That's the, the bottom line. The National Safety Council said that 1.1 million crashes were caused by cell phones. Yeah. People need to set their intentions. Right. You know, people need to... How do we convince them? <laughs> well, there's some different ways. We've talked about them. You leave your cell phone lay, you put it in another room, uh, I know a young woman who felt she was getting, spending too much time on social media, 
and she set a timer for 15 minutes. She gave herself 15 minutes to be on social media. Now anybody who is on social media knows that's not very long because you can waste an hour real easy on mm -hmm. social media and not having accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. now, and it worked for her I want to pose because it. she loves to read. She loves to read and she was finding she had no time to read because she was hooked on to that cell phone. It caused a problem and she, she set her intentions back to what she actually wanted to do and so. Right, right. So we have to have a purpose besides being a, we have to be aware that we're on the cell phone too much we have to have a purpose to, to something else to do, to, to, to take the place of life. Life has like to Like friends and, be and there. going for coffee with friends and leaving the cell phone in the car. And, you know, we have to purposefully do things to break the addiction. You know, the average. Whether, no matter what it is, we have to. The average television is on over seven hours a day. Right, there's another one. That's another addiction. Food, you know, is, a, food I, is a terrible big addiction, and people have to learn how to discipline themselves not to constantly eat all the time. Go on the cell phone, or go on YouTube, or go on and look at all of the recipes they have, and all the ways that you can fix up oh, this yeah. fancy food, and all of these special things. And I'll never forget this as long as I live, that there was a young lady from Japan and she was talking about her technology on the cell phone or on YouTube. She was talking about her technology. And she's explaining that, that this, oh, this wasn't on YouTube. This was in person. She was explaining to me how technologically advanced the Japanese people were. And they were ad making an advertisement, and it was a big old juicy hamburger. And the juice was running out. The onions were crisp and brown and had a piece of cheese in and man, it just absolutely was phenomenal. And then she said this, and you know what? If you go there and lick the screen, you can taste it. <laughs> I'm going to Japan this spring, and I'm gonna send You're you. You're gonna a, try it. I'm gonna send you a picture of me uh, <laughs> licking, lick, the, licking screen. the screen. Yeah. You know, well, I think it would just now. happen to be a Japanese woman promoting that. But so Seoul and Tokyo are two of the most technologically advanced right. cities but in the world. Right. But look how controlled yeah. we are by this exactly. stuff. Exactly. Well, it's you know we were controlled by print media and the new and stuff like that when it was starting but now we're controlled by digital media and digital media is a wheel like you said and it mm -hmm. moves faster than the interstate and so for people with little self-control or or willpower towards goals and what, what priorities that they need to get done this becomes a highway that you want to ride all night long um and that's and that's tough and it's really tough and and none of the big companies are concerned about this problem mm -mm. because we are they making them a money. bunch of money. Money. A lot money, of money. Money, money. And every day I'm astonished by the amount of greed and the amount of just, yeah, sinful greed that we see from, from people, real humans, who, in my opinion, have almost given up their humanity sometimes because that's not how we shouldn't treat everybody like trash and we shouldn't. The one percent shouldn't feel that way towards people as as pawns or using. And I say the one percent of all these social media government government bodies, and I, but they are they are governing bodies almost on how we act. Yeah. And the government has to play a role in that too. Even. And they are. That's a whole. That's a whole topic to put a show on, and that is this business of. And I'll just we'll do it sometime down the road. It's on my, it's on my bucket list, and that is this. We had, the, we had the pandemic, so the government did the bailouts. Whether or not we agree or disagree, it's okay, but they had the bailouts. But do you know what happened with the bailouts? Is every landlord and every corporation, every financial institution raised their rents, they raised the cost of this, they raised the cost of that, and they raised it until they took every dime Back. that the government gave these people that couldn't make enough money to stay in the places they want to stay. Now, was that caused by the dispersion of media or was it caused by 
the greed that Gabe greed. is talking about here. Greed. You yeah, see, we've gotten away from doing what's right for the common good, and yes, we no. think about doing what's right for us. That's, that's it. That's selfishness. That's selfishness. And I think we all understand selfishness yes. from our own perspectives, right? Right. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish. I'm actually, I'm a big proponent of, of being selfish when in the right reasons, in the right times, because we need to take care of ourselves. Well, you do. But it doesn't mean you have to destroy other people or... In the process. Yeah, right. There's always an other option here in terms of some of this. And it's a hard option, sure, maybe, but like taking the easy way out and taking advantage of everything else it doesn't give you a lot of friends at the end of it all. It doesn't give you a lot of support. And that's what people need too. We need friends. We need people. So, in a way, that just about, we're going to run out of time here. Uh, but it's really an important thing because we need, a, we need a discipline. And the discipline needs to be the Bible. And I'm not talking about any particular version. I'm talking about the emphasis that we see in the Bible. The Bible sets the standard the standard that we can operate within. It doesn't take anything from us. It gives stability to us. It gives understanding to complex issues. It's just like the verse that Wanda had read, you know, about a person with the walls broken down. It tells us that we shouldn't be anxious and concerned about other things. It tells us we need to love each other. It tells us we need to love ourselves. It tells us a whole bunch of things. In fact, just before we came on here, I had a man called me from southern Wisconsin, and he was really concerned because of some of the greed that was going on in some of the places. And what do we do about it? Well, all we can do is quote the scriptures, and then the people that hear, the people that are listening on this call, that hear this about the cell phone, we quote the information. You have to act on it. You have to do what you want to. Yes. We can quote the Bible. You have to act on what the Bible says. Yes. And you have to do it. By we example. can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. You have to do it yourself. If you find yourself addicted, whether it be to the cell phone or to the technology or to the computer or to alcohol or to drugs or to food or to driving or whatever it is, you are in charge, and you have to make the change. Nobody can make it for you. That's right. And that is something that we don't want to because we want to give that responsibility. Oh, the cell phone is responsible for it. No. Oh, it was the gun that's responsible for killing these people. No. Oh, it's that car. No. It is you. You took the car. You took the gun. You took the cell phone, and you are who caused what happened to happen. Oh, the alcohol did it. No, you took it, and you used it. Used it irresponsibly. Used the cell phone irresponsibly. Used a gun irresponsibly. Who, who are we going to use for the addiction police? We can't warp reality. We can't lie to ourselves about why these things are happening. We have to have radical awareness about some of this Radical stuff. awareness. I like that term. If we keep warping reality. And this is what happens when you start to lie. When you start to lie, you start to warp reality all the time. And it's not even... I used to think to myself, why do people make small lies up? Or why do people lie on a small scale versus a grand scale? And there's no point. There is no reason. It's about exerting control over reality and warping it for their own ideas, right? And we've all been liars before. We've all done this behavior before. You know, before. we could set the stage this way with President Biden, President Trump. You know what they got to do? They got to take the documents. They got to leave them in the office. <laughs> Duh! We Don't take a brain child to figure that out. Right. Some of the best people that are good at warping reality yeah. have been a part of our That's government. That's warping reality. Yes. And, and we have to come to terms mm -hmm. with some of this stuff. We cannot move forward as people, as a society, as a group even, or an individual. We can't move forward unless we are radically honest about the reasons why these things are happening. And aren't you guys bored yet? <laughs> aren't you bored of like everything we've been getting fed this whole time? All the bullshit social media and the TikTok and the Facebook 
and all these videos. You can watch cat videos for days. You can watch all these things all mm -hmm. the time, but haven't you seen enough yet? What does no. that What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? I'm talking to myself primarily right now. I, I we have to all find our internal motivations yes. to stopping saying enough is enough before we forget what life used to be like, before we forget about not having cell phone service or maybe enough reading is not books, enough. playing in the dirt. I don't know. You know. I don't either. Well, then that's the thing. Addiction is this glass that you can keep filling and filling and filling, and it doesn't matter if it overflows. It just means you get a bigger glass the next time. Yeah. And so we have to stay aware of this. And we have to stay aware of the pain that this causes too, the upsetness of it, the nature of not getting things done or missing out on time with loved ones or missing out on a lot of things because we're doing other things that we don't need to be. Because if we, we don't- We should throw fishing in there too. Well, sure, you can be addicted to that though. But like yeah. if, if, if we don't even feel the pain from it, how are we gonna learn the lesson too on top of that? And, but the problem is, is we use these tools to keep getting away from pain in reality, and we have to sit and in it. And the pain we create with broken homes and broken relationships. We have to sit in it. You know, I couldn't even imagine if you were having, you know, and this really blew my mind. If you were having sex, to take a recess and go and answer the phone because somebody called. How stupid oh, are we? Disrespectful. How stupid are we? Let's well, pray. Let's pray for everybody to get a go revelation ahead. You of start this. And we're gonna, Father gonna God, I just thank you and I praise you that we have cell phones. That technology has brought us to this point. But Lord, we'll take anything and become addicted to it. And so I ask right now that for everyone out there that they get get a revelation of the addictions in their lives and that they understand the, how we can unconsciously become addicted to cell phones and a lot of other things too. And, and the damage that it's inflicting in our lives and the time that we have. And I ask you, Lord, to bring us, bring us to that realization and help us to learn how to deal with the addiction to take responsibility and ch make the changes that we need to make in order to get free, get free of all addictions. In your precious name, Lord, I thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. You know, in the, in the context of the cell phone, I should say, you know, you should, if you punch like when this video gets out there, no, <laughs> don't have to punch <laughs> like. Just give your life to Jesus Christ and let him and his word guide you. Let yes. him and his word detect, determine what you like. Yes. That's what's important because yes. he is your guide. He is your, he's your everything. Just look mm -hmm. up to heaven and say, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Yes. That's all you have to do. And let him change your patterns. Get and he free. will. Get yes. free and get back into your life. Yes, amen. Amen. The healer of infirmities, the honor of the loving race.